Um, I know that actually you have worked with the project for a couple of hours. I actually wanted to know how you actually got to work with them. Uh, Logic, what an amazing guy. I, I love talking about him. Um, he approached me through my agent. He was putting together uh, Incredible True Story. He had just come up with a concept for it. And he contacted my agent, and my agent calls, and she says, there's this 25-year-old rap artist who is interested in meeting with you. And I said, what? Why, why is he interested in meeting with me? And she goes, I don't know, but he's really nice, and it sounds like he's, he's very popular. I looked him up, he's got a big following, and he's interested in having you do something on his album. And I said, okay, I guess I'll meet with him. And he happened to live very close to me. I was living in Tarzana at the time. I had a house out there, and, and Bobby had a house that was 10 minutes away, walking distance. And so we met and had a sandwich together and talked, and I, I just fell in love with this guy. He was. 25 years old and so bright and worldly and had an incredible vision of what he wanted to do and knew exactly who he was. And the first thing he told me was, just so you know, I talk about peace, love, and positivity. And he goes, it's not a weird thing, it's not a cult thing, it's, it's my credo, it's what I live by. And I open every concert by saying that. And I just want you to know up front it, that it's not a weird thing, so don't be weirded out by that, because you're gonna hear it a lot. And I said, okay, no problem, no problem. Let's, okay, so I'm, and now you got my curiosity peaked. What, what are we talking about here? What do you want me to do? So he invited me over to his house. I went to his place, and he had this big, beautiful house that he was renting. He just, just got into LA. And uh, I go into this gigantic mansion, and it's pretty much empty. He's got a couple dudes sitting around. Lembo, Big Lenny, was sitting there with a big computer, and he's, he's just typing away and looks over, what's up? And a, and a couple other of his friends, and I thought, oh my God, what am I walking into here? This is crazy. And I go into his office, which is really the only thing in the house he had set up yet, and I'm tripping over uh, PS3s and Xboxes. He's got all these video games. He's a video game whore. And, <laughs> and I'm tripping my way into his office, and he's got uh, Akira projected on the wall. And I said, what is that, dude? And I'm looking around his room, and he's got P Bebop paraphernalia. And I'm thinking, oh my god, this guy's a gamer and an anime guy, and he's, he's a rap artist, really? And so he starts telling me his story about how he grew up in Maryland, and he grew up in kind of a gangland situation. His brothers and sisters were gangsters, and his mom and dad had all kinds of issues going on. And it was a dangerous life growing up. And the thing that really gave him solace and kept him sane was video games and anime. And he was a huge Bebop fan. And he goes, dude, you know, there's, I, I wouldn't be doing this without you. And I just want you to be part of what I'm doing next. And I'm like, are you serious? Really? I just, I couldn't believe it. And he goes, yeah, he goes, I, I know I'm different. I know I'm unique. He goes, I'm, I'm half white, I'm half black. I don't define myself by either one of those things. And I love anime, and I love rap, I love hip hop. And I have friends in both of those worlds, but nobody will talk to each other. And I want to bring those communities together. And I want, I want hip hop fans to feel comfortable talking about their nerddom in the anime world or video game world, and vice versa, the anime fans who might feel uncomfortable talking about their love for hip hop to be able to have those conversations and put on a costume and go to a con and have a great time. And so I said, all right, you got me, dude. Let, let's do this. I, I, I don't know what you have in mind, but I'm in. I'm absolutely in. And at that point, I felt like I was adopting him. He was, he's the age of one of my sons, my middle son. And I call him my little brother. And I, I just wanted to hang out with him. I didn't care what we did at that point. And so then he pitched the Incredible True Story. He, after that meeting, he wrote all of the dialogue for Incredible True Story that night uh, between uh, Thomas and, and Kai and Thalia and uh, <clears throat> he called me I think it was about a week later and he goes dude I got some copy for you do you mind if we try it out and I had him come over to my home recording studio and he brought his engineer also named Bobby and we went into my little tiny closet of a studio and we started recording and uh, he brought Kevin uh, who plays Kai on, on the show he's also a, a master musician and a producer for Def Jam Records Kevin had never done voiceover before he comes into the booth, and I purposely brought him in there with me, so we're squished in together. And I said, I hope you're not uncomfortable with another man this close. And Kevin's like, oh. <laughs> but, but it brought us really close, and uh, it, it worked for the characters. It made that uncomfortability that you heard on the album sort of play through. And then I got to go to the set where we shot the videos, the, the music video stuff, uh, which was actually an old sound stage where we recorded um, uh, parts of Bebop, we recorded Wolf's Rain, we recorded uh, a ton of uh, Big O. All these old shows were done in a section of this giant soundstage that was set up for audio, and then they had the soundstage of all these 
um, spaceships and things. There's a bunch of sets on the soundstage. It just happened to be in the same facility. And I walk into this place and I said, oh my God, do you know where we are? And he goes, what are you talking about? It's, it's a cool studio with some you know, spaceships. We're gonna use it for the shoot. And I said, no, this is where all your favorite shows were made. We, we recorded Akira right here. He goes, no, you didn't. He's got this gigantic sound crew and all these lights and cameras and all this stuff going all over the place. And I said, dude, come with me. And I knew the owner of the place. It was still the same owners who were running it from back in the day when we were recording. And I walked in room to room and I said, we recorded Big O right here. We recorded Akira right here. We recorded Metropolis in this room. And I'm showing the posters on the wall. And he goes, oh my God. And his mind was just blown. He was, he was just exploding. And we knew that, that the universe had brought us together for a reason. Um, that was all the information that we needed. And from that point forward, it was, we just had fun. And we still have fun together. We went to New York Comic Con a couple times. He did his very first panel for a bunch of anime fans and pop culture fans and the hip hop fans would stream it. Everybody's looking at each other at first and now we're all one giant family. And now uh, he just re uh, released Everybody, the new album. And it's, it's already number one and I think it's probably gonna end up going platinum and he's about to start another world tour. Um, I'm hoping to join him on a couple of his tour dates and maybe go on stage with him at some point and at least announce him or something. Uh, but he's become one of my dearest friends in the world. He and his wife Jessica and his entire crew, we're all really close. And uh, Bobby actually plays D&D &D with us. Yeah, so, you know, one of the, the craziest, most hardcore rappers in the world right now plays Dungeons and Dragons with us. And I'm so proud of that. He loves it too. He's awesome. He's hilarious. His character is ridiculous. I can't wait for you guys to see it. So I don't want to spoil that. When he comes on stage, I'll let him talk about that. But it's really fun. So cool. So thanks for listening. I love I love his music too. He's awesome. Are you? Do you have a question, or are you telling me I only have five minutes left? The oh, so wrap it up. Okay. So shut up, Steve. Is what all you have to say. I'm used to that.